Please welcome the United States Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos. Well, good afternoon. Thank you for that very warm, work, warm welcome. We love you. I, well, I love you. I love the energy and enthusiasm that CPAC brings. So I'm Betsy DeVos. You may have heard some of the wonderful things the mainstream media has called me lately. I, however, pride myself on being called a mother, a grandmother, a life partner of 38 years tomorrow. And, and perhaps the first person to tell Bernie Sanders to his face that there's no such thing as a free lunch. The media has had its fun with me, and that's okay. My job isn't to win a popularity contest with the media or the education establishment here in Washington. My job as Secretary of Education is to make education work for students. But today, today we know the system is failing too many kids. How do we know that? Our nation's test scores have flatlined. 1.3 million children drop out of school every year. And because the previous administration spent $7 billion of your dollars on school improvement grants, thinking they could demonstrate that money alone would solve the problem. Yet their own report, issued as they walked out the door, showed that it had zero impact on student outcomes and performance. They tested their model and it failed miserably. Now this is not an indictment of teachers. We all know great public school teachers. My mom was one. Good teachers make a real difference. Good teachers deserve to be honored and compensated accordingly. But the education establishment has been blocking the doorway to reforms, fixes, and improvements for a generation. This is not a left or a right issue. This is an American issue. We need education to work for every child. So let me ask you, do you believe parents should be able to choose the best school for their child regardless of their zip code or family income? Yeah. Me too and so does President Trump. We have a unique window of opportunity to make school choice a reality for millions of families. Both the President and I believe that providing an equal opportunity for a quality education is an imperative that all students deserve. So now let me ask you, how many of you are college students? Well, the fight against the education ex establishment extends to you too. The faculty, from adjunct professors to deans, tell you what to do, what to say, and more ominously, what to think. They say that if you voted for Donald Trump, you're a threat to the university community. But the real threat is silencing the First Amendment rights of people with whom you disagree. As secretary, I don't think the Department of Education in Washington, D.C. should have more power over your decisions than you do. I took this job because I want to return power in education back to where it belongs, with parents, communities, and states. We can do this, but only with your help. Defenders of the status quo will stop at nothing to protect their special interests and their special gig. So we need you to engage, to be loud, and to never stop fighting for what we believe. We need you to call, write, email, tweet, and snap every politician who thinks the status quo is okay and that they know better than you when it comes to your, your education. Together we can make American education great again. The next generation deserves no less. Thank you, and I look forward to fighting alongside of you. Hi, 
Madam Secretary, it's so great to be here with you. It's great to be with you, now, Kaylee. Now, cheer you guys if you could not be more excited about President Trump's pick for Secretary of Education. Uh, you, are, you are a phenomenal pick, and you've spent 30 years working on these issues that are so important. Children, protecting our future, protecting children of all races, of all identities is crucial, and you are doing that, and you have a history of doing that, and I, I couldn't be more excited for what you have planned for the department. Thank you. And it's an honor. It is. Uh, and on that note, you know, a lot of news has been made in the last 24 hours. President Trump rescinded the Obama guidelines on transgender, and... And, and let's be very clear why, why he did that. President Obama acted lawlessly. He promised us that he would use his pen and his phone to circumvent Congress. He did so repeatedly, including with these guidelines that reinterpreted federal statute. So you put out a letter afterwards basically saying that you want to protect all children, all students. And I wanted to give you an opportunity to clarify what you meant and, and, and state what you meant in, in the ethos of that letter. Sure. Thank you, Keely. Well, I think the statement uh, spoke to it for itself and to a large extent. But um, let me just say that this issue was a very huge example of the Obama administration's overreach to suggest a one-size-fits-all federal government approach, top-down approach to issues that are best dealt with and solved at a personal level and a local level. And I have made clear from the moment I've been in this job that it's our it's our job to protect students and to do that to the fullest extent that we can. And also to provide students, parents, and teachers with more flexibility around how education is delivered and how education is experienced. And to pr protect and preserve personal freedoms. Absolutely. And on that note, you know, talking about the states and empowering the parents, you know, we as conservatives in this room fully believe that the states are the appropriate, robust actors in the field of education. We want parents to be empowered, and part of that is empowering the states. So with that said, what is the role of the federal government in the Department of Education vis-a-vis -vis the states? Well, the Department of Education has, in the past several years, played a very integral role, I would argue in many ways too much of a role. With the new implement, Im, implementation of the new ESSA rules and, and, and law, uh, we will see a lot of that power return to the states and a lot of the flexibility given to the states to do what they can do best on behalf of students. I think that's the right direction. I think the, the role of the federal government should be as light a touch as possible. Um, and, and the areas in which the Department of Education has an important role are really around the needs of special needs students and around um, some of the civil rights issues that we've, we've referenced earlier. Undoubtedly. And you know, one of the things I love just in communicating with you and your staff, um, I really get a sense that you want to unify the country and make real change. And I, I think there's even evidence of that. You know, we're at this time where the country is so divided and there's so much anger and so much disrespect for one another that we need people to come together on behalf of children, in particular in your case. And, and the evidence I, I saw of that in speaking with your staff was on day two, you picked up the phone and you made a call to the teachers union, to the ATF, to Randy uh, Weingartner, and you did this despite the fact that the other teachers union, the NEA, put out a statement saying, we refuse to have a relationship with Secretary DeVos. So you have one teachers union kind of increasing division and another one because you reached out and extended a hand, reaching back and extending a hand back to you. And, and I, I believe you're going on a tour of local schools with with Randy. Well, I had a great conversation with Randy, and I think it's imperative that we work together to find common ground. If, uh, if students represent 100% of our future, we need to be focused around what's right for them and doing what's right for them. My conversation with Randy was great, and um, we've agreed to visit schools together. I will visit a, a school that she selects, a traditional public school, and she will visit a, a, a choice school. So I look forward to that opportunity. That's fantastic. And, and you know, another place where this opposition and kind of divisiveness was showcased was during your confirmation hearings. Uh, I, I was 
myself appalled at the way Senator Warren conducted herself in her line of questioning. Uh, but by contrast, you had Senator uh, Scott, who, who told a beautiful story of how you grew up and how your family mortgaged everything they had to start a business. And you painted a cinder block building and worked on an assembly line. And I think it's such an empowering story. And I wonder if you'd share a little bit of that, because you are the American dream. And, and a lot of students out there are trying to achieve the same thing your family achieved. Oh, sure. Um, yes, my dad was a, a great entrepreneur and inventor. And um, I recall well as a young child, about seven or eight years old, painting the first building with him as he put up a cement block building with his first factory that was um, a, a result of mortgaging everything. And um, I worked uh, through different summers, summer jobs at the, the plant, third shift on the visor plant. So he invented um, the lighted sun visor for automobiles. So anybody who enjoys those, uh, <laughs> you can thank my dad for that great invention. Um, I think it was at the urging of my mom. At, she'd like to be able to see to put lipstick on while they were going <laughs> somewhere at night. But yes, it was, it was, a, it was a really important um, experience for me to grow up in a home where everybody pitched in and, um, and where my, my parents really modeled what it was to pursue the American dream in a really meaningful way. Absolutely, that, that's a great story. Uh, and turning in another page, because I heard you ask the audience who in here are college students, and I heard a lot of cheers. Um, something that's really important to students, conservative students in particular, you know, I'm a recent law school graduate, so um, I, I can empathize with the students out there, is um, academic freedom. Because a lot of times on college campuses, you feel that you speak at your own risk if you speak conservative thought. You are oftentimes bullied by your peers and um, sometimes even your professors and your educators. So what advice would you have to students out there who desperately want to share conservatism but feel bullied in doing so? Well, I think my first advice would be don't shut up. Keep talking. Keep making your arguments. Um, you, you can do so um, respectfully and with civility, but I think you'd need to do so with confidence. We need to have opposing viewpoints and differing ideas in, in, uh, in an academic environment and in any environment where ideas are, are necessary to be exchanged. And I just urge and encourage all of the college students here, or any student, to continue to bring um, your ideas and your viewpoints. That's the, the best way to learn, and it's the best way for us all to learn how to get along together as well. Absolutely. And one of the things that I, I loved about you and when you were President Trump's pick is the work that you have done on behalf of children in poverty. You helped 400,000 families in poverty uh, and assisted them and gave them school choice and assisted in their educational pursuit. And that, that's fantastic. And that is a, a absolutely indispensable part of you know, President Trump's agenda ahead is helping students in inner cities. So what is your plan at the Department of Education to help children in poverty? Well, we know that education is the great equalizer and it's the real um, moment of opportunity for every student. And so the notion that um, I can choose where my children go to school because I can afford to pay for it but um, my fellow Americans can't because they don't have the same economic means is just, it's not right, it's unjust. And um, I, I, I share the president's view that we must and can do better for all Americans to provide each of them with an equal opportunity to a great education. And we will be working together to advance that um, in, during his administration. That's great. Well, this nation is so blessed to have you as Secretary of Education, and President Trump could not have made a better choice. I'm just so thrilled for your vision. I'm so excited.